Hi, I'm Dr Nick. You may have seen me in other videos such as understanding the p-value or understanding confidence intervals. Today I'm going to tell you about how to use the Dragonistics data cards to teach a lesson to primary school children. It also works with older children but we're going to aim it at primary school at this particular level. This is just a quick video, as you can tell, not quite up to our usual production standards, but we wanted to get one out there so that you guys could actually use our cards. Right, this lesson has been tried out on quite a few different um, bunches of children. I've been to various schools and done it with, um, like I said, year level 4, year level 5, and 7 and 8, and 5 and 6. And it works really well. The kids like it and it's pretty fun. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to simulate this with some very small children here. Would you like to bring the camera around here, please? Right, so these are our 20 children that we have in the class and they've each been given a dragon card. And so what we do is we tell them we can take them outside or whatever, but they, have, they look at their own card and they start by finding another person or another child with a dragon with four things the same if they can so they shuffle around and try and find somebody else and like these two here go yeah, yeah, yeah we've got four things the same because they're green and they're eight meters and they've um, got those happy faces and they've got that sort of cloudy sort of thing there okay so that takes a few minutes and then when they found their little people and then you go oops and then you say, right, are there any questions about what's on the cards? So we're going to use some larger cards here to show you how that works. So they might ask about the faces. Now the faces here, these are their behaviours. So there's, um, a, what do you call that? Friendly. A friendly behaviour. And then we have a changeable behaviour and we have a dangerous behaviour. And then they might ask about the breath types. And you can see that there's... Oh, this one here is fire, and you can talk about what do dragons breathe. They breathe fire, or acid, or ice, or nothing. So that's just a start, and then we can look there. Oh, they need to know about the female and the male symbol. And you point out that the green dragons, that are males, actually look a little bit blue. So there's actually just two colours of dragon. There's red dragons and green ones. But the males and the females look a bit different. So the green female, green male, red male, red female. Now we can, you get them to guess what this is and we talk about the height. So this is a 4 metre dragon, a 6 metre dragon and if you're outside you can talk about how big that is and it's probably a bit silly but they're um, fictional dragons or mythical creatures. Um, then you can ask them what they think the birthday cake might be about or what the cake is and, and most children can work out that it's age though the numbers are quite outrageous because dragons grow to be very old. All of our dragons are adults. And then the last one on the right hand side is shields and some of the children might suggest that that's um, defence but in fact it's their strength. And so you can see that Pippa here is a strength of 7 whereas Crispy's only got a strength of 3. So those are the, the different elements on the cards. I'll just make sure I've got all of those. So we have colour, gender, behaviour, breath, age, height and strength. They also have names as you've probably seen and we've tried to make sure that there's a range of names. Right, so now what we do is we get the children to move around and we say right first of all I want all of the red dragons over here and all of the green dragons over here. So they go on green dragons and red dragons over here. And you get them to have a look around and they look at each other's others dragons and so on. And they go okay so now let's have a look at males and females. So so I put the males over here and the females over here. So that gets them to look at what's going on and they can see that there's certain pictures for the males and certain pictures for the females. And they can see, oh look, there looks to be a few more females than males in this particular bunch of dragons. Now when you have a full set of the Dragonistics data cards like this, there are 240 dragons in there. So every time you do this, it will actually be different. And it's probably a good idea to actually stack the deck slightly so that you get about the same number of red and green and about the same number of male and female. Okay, so then we've just sort of looked at that and now we, they say, what sort of questions do you have? And they might come up with some questions, but a really good one is to look at the behaviour. So we're going to sort them into um, 
friendly, changeable and dangerous. So say friendly over here and then changeable here and dangerous here. Now go. So the children move and some of them are a bit slower than others and they need to you say look around and make sure that all of the other people around you have the same behavior and let's have a look if we managed to do this all right well done children oh old fish here should be over there sorry okay so we've got some dangerous dragons we've got some changeable dragons and we've got some friendly dragons okay so have, get them to look around and if one of the children should notice that all of the dangerous dragons seem, are red and all of the friendly ones except for poor old um Elazar <laughs> are green and then all of the changeable ones seem to be a mixture so then what you can do is say okay well I want you to stay in those three groups but I want the red ones to move towards me and the green ones to move away so we have the red ones at the front and the green ones at the back actually we'll do it the other way around red ones at the back and green ones at the front and you can see there We've got some people on their own, so there's lots of friendly green dragons, lots of dangerous red dragons over here, yep, and then there's just a few outliers. From there, you can actually build up a table. So you get them to count, and you'd have your little whiteboard with you, and just draw that in front of them. So you've got one red friendly dragon, eight friendly green dragons, and so on. You've got the zero there. And then you could say, well, what could you say about that? How could you report that? And so they might come up with some ideas like, out of our green dragons, eight were friendly and none were dangerous. Out of our red dragons, only one was friendly and most of them, six, were dangerous. So it doesn't have to be anything fantastically tricky or um, insightful, but just get them thinking of, it's the language of how you write about things. There's this idea of saying most and then in brackets doing six and in fact probably it would be good to have six out of nine that were were dangerous so i'll just change that six out of nine were dangerous depending on the level of the children okay so that's looking at categorical data or sort of things that are, are just counts and so oh and another thing we could do is say well if i wanted to find a friendly dragon i should get a green one so you can just say to them okay i want a friendly dragon what color should i get and that one of them will say i should get a green one which is correct and so you could write that as a sentence as well okay so then we could look at something else and it's good to ask them but we're going to look at height so i used to say um you know, arrange yourselves according to height, but that so didn't work, even with really big grown-up boys, just hopeless. So as, as I'm sure all primary teachers know, you have to go, okay, I want all of the one metre one people to go here, and then they come trot, trot, trot. So one metre guys, so let's do that. And then I want all of the two metre ones here. So um, helper here, we need to be doing this. So we'll, we're going to um, put these all in order, how they should be, so their heights. I've got the tall ones over here, short ones there. And you can see if you had actual children doing this, it would be even slower. Well, maybe not, because there's only two of us here doing this. And I can't actually see very well, which doesn't help at all. Seven, nine, seven, seven, nine, eight, six. Got six over there, so are we right there? So are they lined up nicely, not particularly, and that doesn't happen anyway. Now what will happen too is often they, they wouldn't leave a gap here between one and two, but it's a really, one and three, but it's a really good idea to leave a gap here. So what we've got here is something like a graph. Now remember the children can't actually see that, you can, but what you could do is say, oh well, um, um, would you like to come out and have a look? So is this Itchy or Scratchy? So Itchy, do you want to come and have a look? So Itchy comes out and he goes, oh, he's not that tall. But he has a look and he says, oh, it looks like there's only green ones over there. Actually, he won't know that because he can't see the cards. So what you do is you ask the children with the green, green dragons to put their hands up, which I'm not going to do because it's going to take forever. But, or you ask them to bob down or you ask the red ones to bob down. And so what will show up, and you can see this with these cards, that mostly the red ones are over here, and mostly the green ones are over here. And Itchy sees that, and he says, oh, look, the green ones seem to be taller. Or well, most of the green ones are taller. So you've got some really good language there. So what you can do with that 
is you can then turn that into a graph. You wouldn't need, this is one without the colour, this is just looking at the heights. So you could say things like, um, we can see that the heights of our dragons are mostly between 3 and 8 metres, though there are a few short ones at 1 metre and, and one nine metre dragon. Some sort of statement like that, but we've actually gone on to look at colours as well. So now what we can do is, um, is we put the children into groups, and you, you know how to do that. I generally, because I don't know the children, I get them to line up in order of their dragons' ages, because that's, that's also useful for them to develop that skill and then just go one, two, three, one, two, three, or whatever, split them up into groups of two or three children, and then they do the same sort of thing. Each group of children has 20 or 30 um, dragon cards, or a number about that, depending on the, the age of the children, and get them with their cards to arrange them in the same way that we've been arranging our um, people here. They can arrange their cards on the ground or on a table, and then you get them to come up with some, some reports or whatever. And as they're working on that, you go around and talk to them. Now, we've come up with a system that works pretty well, where you start off and you see what they're up to and you just move them on a level. So if they're doing something with, say, um, looking at ages and colours or something like that, then you can say, OK, so what do you see? And they might say something like, well, these ones here are older than these ones. And so you, then they have to explain it. So you say, what do you mean by these ones? So they have to define more well, green males or red females or something like that. And then they might come up with some hypothesis is that there are more red dangerous dragons or something like that. And then they, they usually get as far as this, but what they don't do is provide evidence. So it's really good for you to say, OK, so what evidence have you got? And that's when you put in the numbers or you draw a graph or something like that. And then they need to be able to communicate it to you or to the rest of the group or whatever and so you get them to do a table or a graph or a sentence that helps to explain what they're doing. Okay so that that could go on for quite some time. Um, generally when I do the lessons we shorten them because I'm just there for a few an hour or so but you actually could spend several days with each each group of children has their own bunch of dragons that they do their analysis on. And I had this idea you could even get them that they, they give interim reports where one might have come up with some conclusion and the other children could look at their dragons and see if the same conclusion applies to them. So it's important that they share what they're doing with each other, but it's also good if you can share it with us because um, it would be great if we can put some of their really good graphs or sentences or whatever on our Facebook page. Now we're here to help you, so if you need any... Um, help with this, email n.petty at statslc.com. I should have that written down, shouldn't I? Never mind. n.petty at statslc.com. And also, we have other resources on our website, um, which includes lesson plans and activities and games that you can play. So with these other cards, these attribute cards, you can also play games. But this was about the lesson, and I hope that's useful to you. Thank you.